And without further ado then, Austin, what is there to announce? So our contact us at blind Android users uh, email address is now live. So if you want to register for episode 75, you can email us at contact us at blindandroidusers.com. We are still rebuilding our website, so that will take some time. And uh, the email address is working right now. So send in your demos or register or send your questions to that email address. Thanks, Austin. And I think there was a phone you wanted to mention as well, a phone release, wasn't there? Yeah, the OnePlus 10 Pro just launched. And uh, I don't know why OnePlus decided to launch the phone with slightly different specs in US. Like the US people will only get a 65 watt charger, not an 80 watt charger. So I don't know why this is. Warren, do you have any more info to add? I am trying so hard to mute my Espanol here because this is not, <laughs> well, frankly, uh, I do not want to offend the uh, OnePlus guys or OnePlus fans out there. Uh, but frankly, I, I don't. This OnePlus 10 does not, you know, please me in any way. And, and most especially, if you're on T-Mobile, you're good to go. But uh, if you're on other carriers like AT&T or uh, maybe Verizon, Ver Verizon is thinking about uh, certifying it. They are not sure. They're kind of playing with it or whatever. But so I don't know why OnePlus would release something that does not you know, cover all the networks here and it doesn't have the MM wave or whatever that Verizon uses. So if you're on T-Mobile, yeah, but if not, I'm not going to worry about it. There are a lot of alternatives out there. So I say to kind of, you know, maybe uh, watch out for a while before you jump in if you want a OnePlus phone. Other than that... Because huh? the GSM, the GS, uh, Verizon CDMA, isn't it? Yeah, but Verizon yeah. supports, uh, you know... Um, uh, all the, the GSM phones as well. Yeah, but if it's a GSM phone, how come it won't work on the other GSM networks? Is it the bands it doesn't have? Or... Well, AT&T, AT I don't know what AT&T is doing, but uh, supposedly uh, OnePlus didn't include some of the bands that the AT&T has or something like that, and so uh, yeah. AT&T wouldn't even wink at it. So uh, that's what it is. But another thing that, you know, apart from OnePlus, I want to say goodbye to an old friend, if I may, kind of makes it a little bit uh, teary-eyed here. Um, the uh, Hangouts, you know, Hangouts finally disappeared from the Play Store. Google finally took the ax uh, to the Hangouts. So we say, we say goodbye to an old friend. Yep, goodbye Hangouts. At Austin, they came out within probably a week or two of each other. You've got uh, some free dollars you can spend. Are you buying the OnePlus 10 Pro or the Xiaomi 12 Pro? Yeah, both are with the 8th generation one. So it's if you have a OnePlus 9 Pro, I don't think there's any need for up upgradation because the only upgrade for the OnePlus 10 is the camera. There's a slight improvement there, but uh, it's eight, Snapdragon 8th eight generation one. And what's the charge time for 80 watts? Because I know the Xiaomi 12 Pro is supposed to charge to 100% in 24 minutes. The OnePlus 10 Pro is charging at 32 minutes. Oh, okay. So if those yeah. eight minutes are critical to you, then yeah. you might want the Xiaomi. <laughs> I, think, I think the reason that they did this is because whoever owns OnePlus missed some meetings because they didn't realize that the US's clocks went forwards before everyone else's and they got so cross that they said right i'm going to punish the whole us now so that's why i think so and oneplus aren't the only ones to do this samsung of course gave europe the xenos or exynos processor and everyone else gets the snapdragon which i've always thought was a bit unfair uh so samsung did it too but yeah two interesting phones to, to, to look at though primarily obviously we're talking about the oneplus but yeah quite right i think i think the us should be punished for putting its clocks forward early uh instead of instead of aligning with the old country which would be much better but at least the the oneplus pro has the charger in the box not like samsung yeah this is true uh yeah. oneplus give you the wherewithal to do things with your phone and, you know, talking about that, though, I don't know why Samsung would even remove the uh, charger from the A53, for example. I think that's absolutely stupid. 
<laughs> I don't know why. They are even removing the charger from the M series phone, which is a mid-range series. Presumably, they do give you the cable, though, but just not the plug for the wall. Is that right? Yeah. So they're copying Apple, then, aren't they? Because Apple have started doing that, and it seems to be based on an assumption that everyone's upgrading their phone rather than getting a new one, so they won't need that bit for the wall because they'll already have it, which is fine for someone like me who would be upgrading a phone, but. Would be quite frustrating if you um, don't already have that. That's the pretext. It's just a money making scheme because they advertise as a feature set on the front page fast charging, which they know full well any old adapter you have won't support. So they, they claim environmental good just so they can charge you. They do. Exactly. They, exactly. they can charge. They can charge you for charging. Yes. So the whole charge thing is charge. like Ed said. You know. Um, we take these things out and we turn around and sell them to you. So, and you know, to me, I think that's more uh, harm to the environment because you are shipping uh, chargers in boxes that should have gone in one box. So, hello. And a lot of the chargers that though that they do ship with the phones aren't as good as they could be. So you would only be able to charge up your phone at the speeds they say with a better power adapter so maybe they just think well if pe- if most people are going to upgrade that anyway we won't give you the crummy power adapter but uh, who knows uh, like you say i think it might be a money making thing as well well i mean i look at me as a good example i i personally don't care if phones are coming with chargers or not cuz i already have like four of them just sitting around my desk so for me, it's not really a big deal, especially when nine times out of 10, I actually end up using the same charger for my phone as I do for my computer. So yeah, I mean, I'm not that bothered. Yeah. Like, I advertise charging speeds if they don't put the charger in, I don't think. Well, I think you have to inform the people as to what the phone has the potential to charge at, but make it clear that, you know, charging speeds may vary depending on what you have as a charger. Because I think a good example is Samsung claims that the uh, F twenty the S twenty Fan Edition can charge at like twenty five um, watts, but yet I plug it into my computer charger, which is a sixty five, and it charges no problem at super fast speeds. So I think we have some more clarity that needs to come out as to what our phones are actually capable of being charged at, opposed to what they're tested at with the phone-specific power brick. But also, it would be good to know um, what you need in order for your phone to charge at that speed. Exactly. So that it's easy for people to then go on to Amazon or you know whichever online store or you know, store in person, but it's usually cheaper online. They want and um, buy the right charger. Um, for example, I bought wireless. I had a couple of wireless chargers for my birthday last year, and it said that if you need, if you want the wireless chargers to charge your phones and things at the full speed, you need to get um, a wall socket charging thing with a Q3 label on it. Um, so that was quite helpful uh, for me to find it. So yeah, that was good. 